talking with the experts. Amanda Kate explains how tuning into our inner genius and inner guidance leads us to brilliance in all areas of our lives in episode 340. Exactly, exactly. And building a profile and building a presence. Um, And because it lights you up and you can see that when you talk to your guests and when you're doing your lives and when you're interacting through your social media channels, you can see that there's the passion behind it. And that's an energetic imprint that some people will go, yes, love Rose, got to talk to her, as I did. (laughs) I'll put my little hand up there. And then there'll be other people who'll be like, oh, yeah, she's fine. And then there'll be this third of people who are like, no, not for me. But you know when you're putting your energy out that your energy is speaking to that third who was like, yes, Rose, she's got a great message. I really like her. I'm supporting her. I want to see her do well. Yeah, Yeah, And that's what I think our energy is best used for in business is the more that we understand ourselves. And again, because, you know, what I mentioned before about that, you know, meat suit, physical body being 4% of the picture, if we are focusing on, say, improving our business life, our home life is automatically going to improve. Mm. Our relationship with our children is always going to improve. Because Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business by business owners for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello and welcome to Talking with the Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. You can find it on all good podcasting, streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Amanda Kate, who is a transformational kinesiologist and coach. And she will be discussing with us prioritising internal truth over external influences, which is always really important when uh, you're in business or even if you're not, because, you know, you need to follow what's truth for you and sometimes stop listening to the little itty-bitty shitty devil on your shoulder. (laughs) Welcome, Amanda, and thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, it's great to uh, connect with you uh, face to face. It's yeah, awesome. Finally. So yeah. yeah, I was so just saying you, a bit uh, cheeky. Yes, that I was. <laughs> I've been following you for a while, so uh, I'm glad. <laughs> so you are a recovering people pleaser and self flagellator. You're um... right, yeah, and you walked <laughs> um, the path of straddling the divine and the messy daily. So you're always growing, you're developing, and learning new ways of being to hopefully one day leave the earth better than I, than you found it. And that's what I I do. I want to be better so that when I leave this earth, it's a much better place, much happier place than when I entered it all yeah. those millennia ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Look, I don't think there's much better uh, aim for our lives, really, is there? No, there's not. And it could be the poor people don't have that as a priority to be a big Yeah. Mm. So you tell me a little bit about um, why prioritising your internal truth is good for the body and soul. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, for so long I, I know for myself I lived to the prescription of what I thought life should be um, and I got quite sick as a result. You know, everything that I... I wanted or needed for myself, I ended up discounting or diminishing or suppressing or whatever, ignoring just generally, rather than looking at it and implementing it and trusting that quiet internal voice. And because I shouted over it so long, it got quieter and quieter and quieter and quieter, which is what we often find happens. We are built to move at walking pace. You know, that's what the human body is designed for. And yet we race around at 60, 80, 100 K an hour trying to process everything that's coming in and the flashing lights and the social media and all of those sorts of things. And we forget sometimes to slow down. 
to take ourselves down to that that walking pace and so because we are so busy and we are so externally focused with all of those different images and all of that information that we're surrounded by it's like being distracted by the bright shiny things and I looking at the shiny things i know i know look squirrel <laughs> it's it's just so wonderful but what we forget is that our body and soul have always known the true path for us and often what we loved as children influences what we're going to be when we're older mm. even if we um i guess don't quite know how so like i always wanted to be a teacher always from like tiny um after i wanted to originally i did actually want to be a bus driver and a petrol station owner by the way I just for a bit of a laugh and a singer. <laughs> see there you go well i thought it looked like fun sitting on one of those bouncy seats and taking people to work but i knew i needed petrol so i figured if i owned the petrol station i could fill up my bus on the way to work ah, you know nice. Yeah, I know, right? Dreams, they were lofty. Um, <laughs> once that went to the side, I want to be a teacher. And it's interesting because I always thought, you know, it'd be primary or high school or whatever. My teaching has come through in such a different way as an adult. And I love it. And it, it lights me up and it makes me shine. And you often see those things that we loved as children coming out as we were adults. And even for you, you know, you think about acting and singing, you are using your voice. You are in front of the camera. You're using those skills and that that wonderful drive and passion just in a slightly different way. A bit like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and our body and soul is put here for a reason. And in tuning in to that internal voice internally, we get a lot more guidance. And for example, me following that prescription, I went to high school, I got good grades, I went to university, I got my degree, I went and worked for my dad for a little while, I went traveling, I, you know, met a man. Oh, it's about that kind of time. Let's, you know, get engaged, get married, have children. Everything was literally by the book. And I ended up getting quite sick because as much as everything was by the book, it wasn't what my heart and soul was crying out for. And that's what started me then on that different path of looking at how everything ties in together. One of my favorite facts that I've learned over the, you know, the course of my study is the fact that the universe is 4% physical matter. Now, quantum physicists have proven that or as much as you can prove it, which means that this human body, this meat suit that we're walking around in is 4% of the picture. And yet we put it up as this big, you know, massive percentage of who we are. We don't look at our work self and our energetic self and our emotional self and our spiritual self and our, all of those different aspects of us. We just look at this physical body and is it doing well? Is it not doing well? And usually it's not until it's almost broken <laughs> that we try and go and work with it to, to make it better. And what I found is the more that I've worked on lots of different areas of my life, the more all of those areas have come together. So when I'm focusing on my physical health, my emotional health improves, my mental health improves, my business self improves, my financial self improves, all of those different areas tie together because they're not all separate siloed areas. And so the more we tune in, as much as it may sound woo woo and all the rest of it, the more we tune into our internal intuition. Now, People in business do tend to prefer it, the gut feeling. They had that business instinct, you know, <laughs> but we can call it a business instinct or we can go way woo woo and call it your psychic senses. It's basically the same thing, just with a different language. It is your internal navigation system teaching you which way to go. And the reason we have so-called good emotions or bad emotions is the good emotions that feel amazing in our body are going, yes, I want more of this. And the things that feel less good, we're like, oh, it doesn't really sit well. And it's just a guidance system. It's like our sat nav in the car, you know, it's tuning us the right way to go. The ones that feel good and that lead us down that right path. And I often see people getting stuck in jobs that they don't like, 
cool because they feel stuck they feel obligated they feel oh, i need that income it's that scarcity model whereas if you tune in and your body's going oh i just don't want to go to work today it's your body telling you there's something not quite in that yeah, for you right. yeah it's like having an anxiety attack it's actually telling you something is absolutely wrong in your life and you need yeah. to fix it yeah exactly exactly and it's that it's that internal you know <laughs> red beeping like ar, ar, ar. Mm. <laughs> wrong way turn back <laughs> you know <laughs> and it's interesting when we start playing with it because we get these what feel like strange guidances that may feel like they come from left field and yet when we follow them we find ourselves more and more on the right track so a lot of the decisions i've made people are like you are crazy what are you doing that for mm -hmm. And then, you know, this magic's come out of it. Um, I've even had a couple of, you know, random conversations in the last couple of weeks that are now opening the doors to this possibility of, you know, a collaborations and things that I hadn't seen before that it, that had just been out of my out of my peripheral vision. But because I'm trusting that internal, oh, that's curious. I'm turning towards it rather than going, oh, that feels strange because I know and trust that internal landscape more. Yeah. And it gives you that honed sense of what's right for you. And what's right for you may look crazy to everybody else, especially when you're following that gut instinct so closely. Yeah, I um, I often have these epiphanies and uh, like um, starting the podcast, for instance, was an epiphany. And yeah. I thought, okay so then um i organized a three-day online summit that was an epiphany I thought, oh, other people were doing it. it can't be that hard so let's do one and then i'm going to start a radio station now an online radio station which i'm in the process of doing and that was another awesome. epiphany but it felt good it felt yeah. right and it, um i've put the radio station on hold because it, it's not quite the right time yet but the idea is out there and i've got all the things ready to go um, but it's just not the right time for people to um, to come on board. Mm. So I'll give it a little while and, and people will um, you know, eventually change their minds and come on board. But I understand what you're saying about, mm. you know, the time has to be right. You can have yeah. great ideas and, and if you pursue them and it doesn't feel right, it, it makes you feel a bit icky inside mm. or you, know, you get butterflies or whatever, it might not be the right time. Great idea, but not mm. the right time to to do to go to move forward with it yeah absolutely the way i categorize that is from that energetic perspective because most of what i do is energy work um, it is tuning into the vibrational frequency of things so in our body if we practice actually being in our body for a start it's always a good idea because often our attention is out there not in here so that if we can tune in a little bit like a radio station okay let me tune into my heart space let me tune into what's going on inside my body we can feel if something is a hell yes or a no mm -hmm. we get a quite clear on those now some things fall into that maybe pile maybes suck a huge amount of energy from us because we're sort of feeding more energy in trying to work out if it falls into a yes or a no with those the way that i do it is i want to either add something to it to make it a yes or i want to be able to take you know take it out of my energetic field and make it a no now some of those so your radio station for for example for me is a not right now now not right nows what i imagine i'm doing is putting little post-it notes out to the universe I really want this radio station. And every time I think about, you know, for you to be the radio station, every time you think about that radio station, it's like you're adding post-it notes to that pile. And the bigger the pile gets because you're putting intention and focus there, the closer it gets to your yes pile without it sucking your energy. Mm. Because it's like you're putting the thought out there and then getting rid of the thought out of your head because it's written on a post-it note you don't need to remember but you're making this pile bigger and bigger and bigger and as you do so it's moving closer and closer to yes that's not sucking your energy 
So I have that, you know, with my second book, I've, I've written my first, it's all published. I've got heaps of notes for my second. Every time I think about it, I'll add notes to my file and, you know, it's like I'm putting another sticky note out to the universe with other ideas. It's like, I'm just filling this board with sticky notes. And then I'll just keep adding to different piles and going, oh, actually that one's, that one's got something to it. And it's like, as I'm doing that, I'm also looking for little signs or the people that I might need to meet or the connections I might make or whatever it is to see whether or not it's going to move closer to a yes or a no. But as it sits in this, maybe it's sucking our energy and we want to take that away. So what you've said is absolutely great. You know, yes, I'm going podcast. Definitely. I've got my summit. Yes. Ah, oh, that radio station. Now, if you were in the state of, oh, should I, shouldn't I? Oh, that is just like this big fire hose of energy from you going out, which takes energy from some of those other yeses in your life. Whereas you're like, yeah, I'm doing it. It's just not right now. So it's kind of in your yes pile, but it's just a not right now. Yeah. And yeah. you're putting a little bit more energy into it each time. And Every time you think about it, you're like, I just need a couple more of the right people to come on board for this. And then we're there. Awesome. And so the universe will start sort of reading through those sticky notes. And all of a sudden, somebody will be in your face and you'll be like, you're one of the people I need. (laughs) Or you're one of the connections I need. Or, and then you're like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. So it's obviously getting closer. Yeah. Yeah. And so using energetics in business is amazing because you can learn what's sucking your energy and what's giving you energy, what's feeding it, what's allowing you to boost your mood, to boost your energetic profile so that you are attracting more. And I, I just think that's incredible. So I love what you're saying with that. And I also love the fact that, you know, going back to what you said what you were wanting to do as a child is acting and acting and singing. You're using your voice beautifully and you've got that, that stage presence, basically, even though it's on camera. Yeah, I um, guess, yeah, I'd never thought of it in those terms because, you know, acting to me was like being in the movies or, <laughs> or you know, being on stage or um, you know, that sort of thing. But yeah, you're, you're quite right. I am using my voice for and for good. And I'm using yeah, my, my presence as on camera. It's not like in the movie theatres, but it's just as good. Exactly, exactly. And building a profile and building a presence. Um, and because it lights you up, and you can see that when you talk to your guests, and when you're doing your lives, and when you're interacting through your social media channels, you can see that there's the passion behind it. And that's an energetic imprint that some people will go, yes, love Rose, got to talk to her, as I did. (laughs) I'll put my little hand up there. And then there'll be other people who'll be like, oh, yeah, she's fine. And then there'll be this third of people who are like, no, not for me. But you know when you're putting your energy out that your energy is speaking to that third who was like, yes, Rose, she's got a great message. I really like her. I'm supporting her. I want to see her do well. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. And that's what I think our energy is best used for in business is the more that we understand ourselves. And again, because, you know, what I mentioned before about that, you know, meat suit, physical body being 4% of the picture. If we are focusing on say, improving our business life, our home life is automatically going to improve. Mm. Our relationship with our children is always going to improve because they're not separate entities. If you think about how, you know, somebody who hates their job and they come home and they're like, oh, I hate my job. It's yeah. just... It affects their home life. It affects the relationship with their partner, with their children, with, you know, whoever else they live with. If somebody comes home from work and they're, you know, up and they love their job and everything, that affects mm. that as well. Yes. Yeah, Likewise, absolutely. if things aren't great at home, you go into work with that, oh, things aren't great at home kind of feeling and so you can start to see how those energetics from one area of your life automatically flow through to the other Mm. and that's what I love in terms of you know I guess that energetic side of self self self-development is looking at how everything mixes together and becoming 
whole so that you can bring your whole self into all of your interactions. The way I look at, you know, it is prior to me doing this work, I had one me for work and I had one me for the relationship and I had one me for my children and I had one me for my friends. And I think we've all been there. (laughs) The more work I've done, it's like I've come in just, there's just one me. And certain people might just see certain facets, but it's all me. Mm. And so the me you meet here, if we met on the street, you would see pretty much the same me. Yeah. And I used to be different people, different faces for different people. Uh, um, And yeah, I stopped doing that um, Mm. because I thought if you don't like me the way I am, then you're never going to like me. It doesn't matter what face I put on because I can't pretend to be something or someone that I'm not. Yes. And, you know, I'm offensive to some people because I have a potty mouth and I'm offensive to some other people because, um, you know, just the way I live my life. So yeah. I know. call myself a spiritual sailor, so I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've, um, I've, in the last two years, I've learned to trust the universe more with, mm. with the things that are happening in my life um, because I think that things happen um for us they don't happen to us and Mm. you know whatever hardships you've had they're there to teach a lesson Mm. you know and they could be really horrendous but the the universe has has put you through that trial to see um, how you'll come out the other side and I I know and I didn't believe that for a long time because I'm a child of incest and Mm. so um, you know I always thought horrible things and you know my life wasn't worth anything and But in the last couple of years, I've started to really trust the universe and where I am. And it's really changed the way I think about Mm. things. And and if bad things happen, then I I think, well, there's a reason for it. What lesson do I need to learn from it? Yeah. And how can I how can I come out the other side with more knowledge, with more wisdom, with more empathy and with more compassion? Mm. And, you know, I, I think most people obviously have some form of trauma in their life. Now, some of the big T traumas and some of the little T traumas, but when we think about trauma, and this is what I love doing, you know, I I have a lot of clients who are complex trauma clients who have been through similar things to you, who've been through, you know, patterns that I've been through. And even those people who haven't been through those really big traumas, they have all these little traumas because a trauma is anything that is less than nourishing and nurturing to you. And it depends on how we store that then in the body and whether we resist it and therefore it gets stuck or whether we're able to process it and it can flow through. And I think what happens, especially when we have those traumas as as younger children, we do suppress it because we're trying to survive and we want to get to adulthood. So the body will create all sorts of, you know, behaviors, defense mechanisms, reactions that keep us safe to get us to the next day and to get us to the next day because it wants us to get to adulthood and whether those traumas come from you know something as horrific as you've been through or whether they're through overly critical parents or or overly strict parents or you know some of those smaller traumas which are still stored the same way in the body because it's not about comparison as we get older, we start to unpack that if we are lucky enough to find the people to work with that can help us unpack that, Mm -hmm. which then clarifies the path for us. It clears the way. And so, you know, you wouldn't have got to these last couple of years without you following that specific path and without perhaps meeting, oh, that person, I want to talk to them more about that. Or, and that is that guidance system. That is the universe doing it for you and with you rather than to you. Mm. and it is beautiful to come through that and I also remember the time that the universe doing it for me used to really piss me off and make me angry because I'm like who says I deserve that you know (laughs) let's face it I want an easier ride and I still do that by the way because you know I'm not enlightened I'm I said to one of my clients the other day I'm not going to be Jesus in this lifetime I'm sorry I'm just (laughs) she said that's the title for your next book um (laughs) But, you know, there's still work to do because I still go into that mode of, oh, seriously, another trial. What is going on? Mm. 
even though I know that there is growth in it, there is lessons, I will find a deeper level of compassion. I will find a deeper level of understanding for myself, which automatically makes me less of an asshole than I was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I was told that I've had, I've had 50 lifetimes apparently. <laughs> and I've been sent back on this earth um, in different forms or whatever to learn from my, from, to learn lessons. Mm -hmm. And because I haven't learned everything I've been sent each time to, yep. um, to learn. So, yeah, interesting to know what I come back as next time. <laughs> <laughs> and I think all of us are. We all, you know, I guess that is the point of, of being here and of life and, and of finding those passions. And the more that we can tap into those passions, the more we are naturally going to start learning those lessons because we're following that good feeling feeling. And that's what really lights me up is helping people uncover and dust off that purpose that they're here for to help them learn those lessons to help them uncover that that truth of their soul the truth of their being and allowing them to step forward as their greatest self and the way um i, I guess i've described my role is to hold light for others until they can see it in themselves and hold it for themselves because often when people come to me, they're like, oh, just, I don't know what to do. Like, should life be this hard? Or, you know, I, I just don't know what to do. And that stuckness is often the best place to start cracking through to get some of that, that growth and, and that magic coming back through, the awe and the wonder and the desire for life again that real feeling of, oh, there is something to being here that's really exciting, that's really nourishing, that I can then take forward and, and give to others. Absolutely, absolutely. I can feel your energy coming through the screen. <laughs> Amanda, you have written a book and you're on I have. your second book. What is your first book called? It is called um, Divine Messy Human. Uh, it's a spiritual guide to prioritizing internal truth over external influence. So there is a bit of esoteric stuff in there, but there's also some really practical things and it's, it's not really my story. So, um, I had somebody that I also did a podcast with say, I expected it to be more of your story when I was reading it. And I was quite surprised. And I'm like, well, the bits of my story that are relevant are kind of in there, but uh, who wants to read about me really? They want to read about how I went from one thing to another. And so I went more with the tools and techniques, the things that I've learned through my kinesiology study, the things I've learned through, you know, the other energy work that I've done, the things that I've learned with lots of different teachers that I've pulled together to almost have as a bit of a guide. There are things that you can dip into if you're having a bad day, reminders of tools, um, just different ways that we can access different parts of ourselves to be able to really start uncovering that true light within us because all of us have God's source within us. That true peace, love, joy, happiness, it resides in all of us. Yeah, we, we are all, all part of that. for utopia somewhere, aren't we? Yeah. And you know what? You have it in you because you're all, we've all got that stardust, yeah. that, that God source. And, and what this is, is about, you know, helping to remove some of the conditioning that creates the film that goes over that light, that creates the, oh, I don't know that I'm comfortable enough shining my light and being me in the world. And also gives you permission to be who you need to be. Um, and you were talking about potty mouth. Um, so I actually printed the book with two titles because there was a message that I got through from one of my um, guides in a meditation, um, which has a bit of a funny story to it. But um, I won't actually say the word because I don't think it's ever been put on the front cover of a book before, but it's called Don't Let That Sea Steal Your Bricks. Oh, yes. So it's exactly the same book, but just different titles because some of my friends said, I really want that title on my bookshelf. And I'm like, so do I. So I printed the one book under two covers. So again, see, it's about doing things differently, doing things that light you up, not always doing, because when I spoke to my editor, she's like, I don't think that's ever been done before. I'm like, well, it will be now. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Let's so do what it. Is this, what's the second one about? It's exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's just got the different cover on. 
because I wanted that title on my bookshelf. So exactly the same insides, just the different cover. Uh, Not everybody likes that word. Not everybody resonates with that word, although the story is in the book about how I stopped caring um, and stopped being offended by it um, because it was a message from my inner wise person. It is, it is, but the anyway. F word, people get offended by the F word. I know. Honestly, it's just a word. <laughs> and the word, how we use it now was not actually how it originated. Mm, exactly, exactly. So the, the origin of the F word is uh, comes from um, back in the medieval times mm. when the landlord or the king or whatever used to go and take the, on the bride uh, on her wedding night. Yeah. And that was actually a ceremony. And, yeah. And so, yeah, that, that's how the word came about. It's yep. got nothing to, well, it's, so how people use it today really isn't yeah. the same. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, I, I, I'm completely with you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find you if they'd like to work with you? Uh, I'm at www.amandakate.com.au. I'm on most social media platforms, um, but I think most of the links apart from my TikTok are on my website. So that'll make it to my website at some point. But uh, yeah, so no, I'm just, uh, yeah, I try and get on most of them, but I don't think I do any of them consistently. So <laughs> I no. flip from one to the other. Yes, it, me too. <laughs> but I figure people, if they want me, they will find me and come across Absolutely. me somehow. It's so, yeah. Divine timing. Exactly, exactly. So any last words that you'd like to share with us today? No, just thank you so much for bringing the work that you're bringing into the world. It's just wonderful. Like I say, having conversations with people is one of the best ways that we can learn um, and by listening to what other people have to say. So thank you for, for giving me the opportunity and for and for sharing your work with the world. Oh, lovely. All right, Amanda, thank you so much. And I will talk to you again very soon. Excellent. Will do. Bye. You've been listening to Talking With The Experts, hosted by Rose Davidson. Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time. Talking With The Experts.